Next on Images e Imagen is the dynamic community leader and author, Marta Moreno Vega. ¿Cómo están? I'm Miguel Pérez. Our guest today is a widely recognized Hispanic community leader, inspirational and yet forthright. Her efforts and beliefs in the diversity of America have sprung worldwide conferences in the United States, the Caribbean, and in Africa. She has served as a bridge between U.S. Latinos and African Americans, and between black people and the rest of the world. A tireless worker, she takes pride in bringing recognition to the contributions of black Latinos and Latinas in the Americas. And now she's the author of a book on Santeria. Today on Images Imágenes, we are proud to have with us once again our friend Marta Moreno Vega. Gracias. It's a pleasure having you here. Thank you. You're Thank an author you. now. Yeah. We're going to talk about <laughs> your book in a minute, but I, I want to talk about something else, about you being a community leader and how you mobilize the masses. Because people should, yeah, you do, you do. You, you <laughs> hold these f festivals in New York uh, where thousands of people come out. And you know what does it take? How does how does how do you do that? Let, we should say that you started, for people who don't know you, uh, El Museo del Barrio, um, the Association of Hispanic Arts in New York, and the Caribbean Cultural Center. So you have those you know those roots in the community. You're a, a, a grassroots person. But how how does uh, Marta Moreno Vega get thousands of people to come to a festival? Well, I mean. There's hay un vacío. There's like a space that needs to be filled in terms of understanding our traditions and celebrating our traditions. And I think that the work that I have done simply has sort of filled a void that our people have felt and that I have felt, you know, and we all feel as Latinos in the United States that um, the celebration of our traditions, the celebration of our culture, the celebration of what defines us as being Latino, because what defines you as being Latino, those things that you practice, those things that you do, uh, and you don't see them reflected on TV. You don't see them reflected in uh, the world around you. Mm -hmm. So that what we have done uh, through the work that I've done at the center and AHA and El Museo del Barrio, for example, uh, was developed by parents. Mm -hmm. I incorporated Amigos del Museo, but parents already in 69 were saying, why don't our children have Puerto Rican history, Caribbean history in the schools? So what you did basically was recognize the void and then try to fill it. Well, it was a, it's a void that we all feel. You know, this is what this program is about. You know, having people understand that we have made contributions to world cultures, you know, and that Latin America has influenced and feeds the world. You know what I'm saying? So how is it that our traditions, our history, and our time and space in the creation of world culture is not in the educational system, is not in uh, magazines and TV, so that Basically, what I'm doing is what you're doing. You know what I mean? Um, what we were all are doing, trying to create that space that yeah, defines but, us. Yeah, see, I have the magic of television. I yeah. can reach a lot of people <laughs> through, through TV. You have to do it by mobilizing people to come out. In fact, I want you to watch something, because there was a purpose for my first question about how you mobilize people. Uh -huh. We have a surprise for you. Watch oh, this really? tape. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> Every year, the beauty of the Afro-Caribbean culture comes to life in a carnival atmosphere that attracts thousands of people from different nationalities and backgrounds. They gather to witness the African heritage and music of the Caribbean islands. Steel drums from Jamaica and Trinidad blend in with the merengue music of the Dominican Republic and the plena of Puerto Rico, all in an effort to show their common African roots. Brazil is present because they share in the joy of the Caribbean experience. During the 1800s, millions of Africans from the Yoruba nation were sent to Brazil and the Caribbean islands as slaves. In 
search of freedom, they developed an acrobatic dance form of ancient Africa, feet fighting, which was mostly performed on the hands using kicks and chops. It was called capoeira. people attended this festival, creating a sea of humanity and pride. The event is called Caribbean Expressions, and those on hand had plenty to say. I just have to say it was really great, and we are going to join them as soon as possible. We have been here every year from now on. It's a beautiful expression of Caribbean expression. I think everybody comes away with a feeling of togetherness, and all of us have all kinds of roots to the Caribbean and everywhere else, and it made a great feeling of togetherness. While many of the participants are grateful of having this carnival, organizing an event of this magnitude is not easy and requires a lot of determination. The woman responsible for its creation is Marta Moreno Vega, a New York-born Puerto Rican who battled the odds and the many who said it cannot be done. Well, that's what we heard, or I heard all along, you know, at, at the very beginning, that um, because we identify as Puerto Ricans or as Haitians or as Afro-Americans or as Trinidadians, that we would not be able to bring all of these audiences and communities together in being part of an audience or being part of a joint activity. And it's just not so, you know. Um, people promote that notion, and people outside of us promote that notion, but that notion just isn't so. We identify as a community, as a family, because we all have African traditions that are an integral part of our cultures. Inspired by her parents and a fellowship grant to study the African influence in the Caribbean, Marta Moreno Vega began to find her roots in the library of renowned historian Arthur Schomburg. That is a treasure. And uh, his concept of bringing people together, networking, exchanging information, uh, was key to not only the development of the Schomburg Library and his collection, but clearly to institutions like ours that are springing from that thought. Besides the religious artworks, the Caribbean Cultural Center also sponsors a street festival where people become familiar with the Afro-Caribbean crafts, displays, jewelry, and food. Oh, wow. You weren't expecting this, right? No. How does, how does it, how does it feel to see it. yourself 10 years oh ago? Oh, my God. <laughs> this was in the mid-1980s, the mm -hmm. Caribbean Expressions right. uh, Festival that you sponsored, uh, right. the Caribbean Cultural Center, led mm -hmm. by you, uh, at Lincoln Center. Right. And you had people dancing through the streets of Manhattan. Mm -hmm. um, tell me about that. What, what, has, is it still going on? Is that festival done? Well, this year is going to be a blockbuster because it's our 25th anniversary. So August 5th, everybody has to come out. Uh, and see what we're doing in uh, Lincoln Center because we're going to recreate Carnival. We're going to have a celebration of our 25th year. Okay, and some of the comments that were being made on the tape, I, th I thought were very interesting. How it was the festival actually brings people together, not just Caribbean people, but Americanos and everybody else who wants to join in the Caribbean culture. It's really a, a well. We have a shared history. You know what people don't understand is when more than 50 million people were torn out of West Africa, and distributed throughout the world. Um, African traditions and African belief systems and culture spread throughout the world. So you can't go to Cuba without seeing the African presence. You can't go to Santo Domingo without seeing the African presence. Colombia, Panama, and Honduras. You, and when you, know? you go to all of those co countries and you see the African presence, is there a difference? Has it changed from country to country, the African influence? Absolutely, because depending on the colonizing influence, depending on the presence of Native Americans, depending on the number of Africans that were taken. I mean, in Brazil, more than six million Africans were taken to Brazil. Puerto Rico, 80,000. You know what I mean? So that you see the varying presence of, uh, of Africa. But um, de donde viene la bomba y la plena? You know what I mean? De donde viene el son? De donde viene, you know, all, all of, of, of that music? All of that 
that is drum music, you know, it comes from Africa and it has permeated our cultures and it's part of the fabric of who we are. So that all that we do in terms of the center is celebrate that fabric that often we overlook because, you know, uh, I think Latinos are very proud of the native traditions as we should be, also proud of their Iberian, you know, influence as we should be, but oftentimes the African presence gets put to the side because it's seen as something negative, it's seen as something primitive, it's seen as something backward. You know do what you, I mean? Do, so you, do you see yourself doing what you've been doing as a continuation uh, of the work of your hero, Arturo Schomburg? Uh, oh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, uh, the work of Arturo Schomburg, Evelina Antonetti, the parent, one of the parents that fought to have culture in this school. She said, how can our children learn from Dick and Jane? They need to learn from the heroes and sheroes that brought us here, that made us who we are. Um, Catherine Dunham, the work of Catherine Dunham, Sora Neil Hurston, Eusebia Cosme, I mean Celia, I mean Celia Cruz has influenced the world with her music. But you on, know. The, on the video we saw you, uh, uh, even as a young uh, woman, uh, going to the Schomburg Center and, and getting inspiration from him. And we should say that he's one of the leading African-American historians who happens to also be Puerto Rican. Yeah, absolutely, no question. He came here to fight for the independence of Puerto Rico and understood that as an Afro-Boricua, uh, he needed to understand his experience as well as the broader experience. Mm -hmm. And that's where the uh, uh, Arturo Fonso Schomburg collection grows from. And um, I think that's what we're all doing. We're looking for those traditions that have survived that have influenced us, that persist in a very celebratory way, and define us and define our existence. Tú sabes que come sancocho, que está comiendo, you know, que come pasteles, que está comiendo, you know. So that all of that reality has to be brought forward because it has been excluded from our experience and not celebrated. And the work of the center is to celebrate that because it reflects who we are. Mm -hmm. And when we say pasteles, we should clarify that those are. Eh, bueno, eso es este guineo con carne, con vegetales. Typical Puerto Rican food. I don't typical Puerto Rican food, I guess. You know, it's uh, the food that Africans, uh, and the dishes that Africans developed because they had to deal with what was left over from whatever the so-called master's table was. Mm -hmm. So they created a whole cuisine throughout the Caribbean and Latin America that it traces its um, route to Africa. Okay, so how does this fit into your, your life? And, and, and what does this, I mean, what, this is a new chapter in your life. You are, uh -huh. for a long, long time people have said, for a long, long time people have been saying, well, you know, Marta Moreno, she's into, uh, into Santeria. Really? Well, well now, we, now we know that you're into Santeria because you, you're an authority on the subject. This is the, the author of My Soul, Living Traditions of Santeria. Mm. Um, how, how, how far back does it, does it date uh, with you? Uh, have, has, I have was you initiated in Cuba. I was initiated in Cuba 20 years ago in Havana. But and even before then? Before then, in terms of my parents and in terms especially of my grandmother. And I think that many of us have grandmothers that have maintained a tradition in our homes and never speak about it. So in my casa, there uh, was an altar, there was an altar in my home. Um, there was always la boveda, the glasses to the ancestors and to the spirit world. Uh, the images of Catholic saints that hid the images of Yoruba gods and goddesses. Before we go any further, Magda, for those who don't understand, define what Santeria is. Santeria is a combination really of of religion that was brought from Africa and well, then... Well, Santeria has its base in Yoruba traditions and uh, Yoruba traditions that were brought into Cuba. And Africans, in order to maintain their religion and maintain their belief system, hid Yoruba images, Yoruba While they divinities, were slaves, yes. Uh, behind Catholic images because to worship African traditions under enslavement was to uh, become a victim of murder, of abuse, because part of colonization, right, part of that process is to deny the cultural tradition and implant it with a foreign one. And that's what they tried to do with native peoples and they tried to do with Africans, mm -hmm. to make them forget who they were. And um, So they took the Catholic saints? And hit them, and hit Yoruba gods in uh, behind Catholic images. So they would call uh, Santa Barbara, but they were really talking about Rashango, a Yoruba. They were right. talking about Rashango, a Yoruba. Rashango, las Mercedes o Batala. 
you know, la calidad del cobre o shoe, so that the Yoruba god or goddess remained behind that Catholic image as a mask, mm -hmm. right? So that when um, slave masters, and again in quotes, uh, saw Africans practicing their traditions, they thought it was a corrupt pro uh, system of Catholicism, and it wasn't. Because right now, if I put a mask on you, it doesn't stop being Miguel Perez, right? right. So that this is what, where the name comes from. So actually, the name in Yoruba is Lukumi, the Lukumi tradition. But, mm -hmm. you know, we have grown up more or less hearing Santeria as the so popular is, term. So is Lukumi, because Santeria was adapted to the Catholic religion and Lukumi is the pure... Lukumi is a, is a tradition. It's the pure as it's form known, as in absolutely. Africa. Is it different, Santeria and Lukumi now? Has Santeria changed so much that it's different from Lukumi? Well, I think that what happens is that the more you know of the history, the more you understand that Catholicism has nothing to do with the Yoruba saints, mm -hmm. that they were just a masking process, okay. a camouflage process. So oftentimes you'll hear people equate them simply because they have no knowledge or not enough knowledge of the history. And I think that what you're seeing now with uh, a, 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 a more developed consciousness in terms of not being fearful, right? And you, there's still that fear because I'm saying that even like people who see me, I have a doctorate, I have taught at the college level and all that I have done, when they hear I'm a Santera, they go like, oh my God, yeah, you know well, what I mean? Well, wait, that's the next question. That's the, <laughs> so, you know, that so why does it have that negative connotation? Because it, it, it's been part of the history of our traditions that anything that is black is negative, that anything that is African is primitive. And we were taught that. And, and you hear people saying, well, it's voodoo. Well, there's nothing wrong with voodoo. Voodoo I know, comes no, but, from the but, Fong people uh, of what it was Daomi and is now, you know, and was spread throughout Haiti and throughout Brazil. But, it's, but voodoo is not Santeria. It's, it's no. different. Uh, it's related, but not the same. N it's related, but not the same. Um, they bo bo both of them are earth-based religions. Okay. Both of them have divinities uh, that manifest nature. But what it is, is that the root is a different ethnic group from Africa. So the Fung people were the majority taken to Haiti, so that's why you have Vudum. Uh, the Yorubas were the majority and the Congos were the majority taken to Cuba, so that's why you have Palo and you have Lukumi or Santeria in Cuba. You know, um, you have a mixture of people being taken to Brazil, so you have the Fung, you have the Yoruba, you have the Congo. So, tiene Arara, tiene Jeje, tiene Candomble, you know, so there's a variety in Brazil because of the mass of Africans taken. And then the other thing that we have to realize is that these traditions are very much alive because their very enslavement is recent. In Cuba, when does enslavement end? In 1880. In Puerto Rico, 1873. In Brazil, 1888. Eso fue ayer. Mm -hmm. That was yesterday. You know what I mean? So that these traditions are very much alive because they are part of our fabric and part of our families belief system. So why are you attempting to, what were you attempting to do when you wrote this book and what, is, what was the mission that you were trying to accomplish? This is not just a book about Santeria, it's your own personal journey through yeah, Santeria. Well it started as my um, dissertation and then as I looked at it I went to speak at a college of state and this young woman came up to me and she says you know can I speak to you privately and I said sure and um, she started saying, well, you know, I understand that you know about African religions and so on. And every time I want to find out about this or more about this, and I have certain feelings, like I, I, I get messages and so on, and I speak to my mother, she says, like, ese es el diablo. Don't even ah, refer to that. Devil. You know, that's the devil. And that hurt me because I think that the gifts that we have and the very specialness that we have, and the things that we truly believe in, because when you're sick, then you relate to your espiritismo, you relate to the spirit world and the Lukumi tradition, uh, isn't celebrated. And we're teaching our children to hate the gifts that they have, the sacred gifts that they have. And at that point, I decided that there needed to be a book that spoke about the history and the experience that we have had with African religions. And I guess, you know, like, I, it, rather than use somebody else as an example, I use myself. You know, um, I was brought up with Espiritismo. I was brought up in El Barrio. My grandmother tenía como un altar, tenía un cuarto de santo. She had a, a, a saint's room and a spirit room. And I helped her fix her altar when I was little, and I didn't know what I was doing. 
And it's not until later when I become a researcher and start looking at these traditions that I begin to say, like, I had that object in my house. I understand what's going on, mm -hmm. um, you know, now. But I didn't understand it then. And then when I went to Cuba, I mean, it was just a, a revelation in terms of what we have been able to preserve as a people and celebrate. Mm -hmm. um, there's a passage, there are many passages that I would love for you to read, but there's one in particular in the back cover of the book that I, that, uh, I know you brought your glasses. So yeah, you know that. Will, will you read that for <laughs> us? Because I think it's beautiful. Thank you. Well, one of the passages in the book in terms of explaining my initiation uh, is the following. Through initiation into my religion, one is reborn. It is a conscious act of letting go of negative influences that weigh down the spirit, allowing it to soar and embark on a new beginning. The energy that naturally flows from initiation opens up inner channels, granting the initiate the ability to see, to feel, to smell, to taste, and sense more accurately, and to be more present in the world. By combining my knowledge of the spiritual and the secular worlds, I have found a universe that unveils all of its wisdom and beauty before me. Like the great Santeria Lukumi goddess of the ocean, Yemaya, who lives both in the ocean and on the earth, we must avail ourselves of all of the natural treasures of both worlds. Mm. Wow. I, I, you know, it, I'm def I haven't read the entire book. I've, I've browsed through it briefly Thank because you. I just got it. And by the way, you have to sign it for me I would love before to. we leave. <laughs> but, uh, you know, tell me about, you know, is it growing? Is Santeria something that's growing in our community? And not only in, in New York and New Jersey, in this area, but in, in, in the Caribbean? Is, is, are more people becoming so. Santeros? I, be I believe that it's becoming more visible and people are more proud of it. And this is one of the reasons that I wrote the book, because we're no longer in enslavement, hopefully. But and there's also more acceptance celebrate. of it. There's a greater acceptance of it, I think, from the 60s and 70s, when we were looking at movements of black pride, Latino pride. Um, we were looking for images that looked like us. We were, we were understanding that the images that look like us tell, tell us that we're beautiful, that we're sacred and that images that don't look like us, right, tell us that we can't be beautiful and sacred. And I think the important thing is in terms of feeling pride in who you are, is to feel comfortable in your skin. If you don't feel comfortable in your skin, then how can you possibly love your culture and love your traditions, love your grandmother and your mother and your father and your uncles? Because if you don't love who you are, then how can you have pride in all that you bring? And that's what your whole career has been about, in everything that you've been involved, all the way to this book, get, getting black Latinos, Latinos, African Americans, comfortable in their skin. I think so. I and, think so. And we do feel more comfortable because of what you've done. I mean, I, I have gone to your festivals. We, we feel um, enlightened, we feel inspired, um, and, and I think that's, that's part of, I'm sure this is what this is in this book as well. I mean, I, you know, who knows? I may become a Santero after I read this. <laughs> I, I'm serious, <laughs> Matt, that you have that influence on people. When, when I, I have seen it in many different festivals and many different events that you've, that you've coordinated. Uh, and again, I'm going back to the very beginning. What does it take to do that? What is in you that brings people together? I don't know. I think it, I don't think it's me. I think it's that we're all looking to feel comfortable in who we are and to celebrate all those things that we are, you know. And when you see the opportunities are celebrated, people come. Uh, I don't go to people's houses and knock on the door and say, "Come to our festival," you know. People come because they want to come. People are motivated to come because they're seeing reflected themselves. And I think that that's what the center does, you know, and if I'm a vehicle for that, it's a good thing. You know, I don't see myself as a community leader. That's why I laugh, because I don't think that consciously ever I feel that. I think that we do what we do because we know it's right. We do what we do because we have children. Yeah, but a we leader, have grandchildren, a leader, a leader you know? is someone who has a following, and you definitely have a following. Well, I don't, you know, I, I again, um, I think that we come to the world with a purpose. I, I firmly believe that. And as a parent and as a grandparent, because I wasn't a grandparent in, in Nashville, um, I think that it's very important for us to leave something behind that our children 
can continue to manifest, right? And in doing that for my children and grandchildren, I hope it affects your children. And I know that what you do, you hope affects the broader community. Because you know that when you leave, your child is going to be in a community that should nurture them. Mm -hmm. And you would hope that that legacy continues. And that's why we do what we do. Well, I thank you for being here, and I hope you keep doing what you've been doing for many, many more years to come. And thank the book, you. again, is The Altar of My Soul, The Living Traditions of Santeria by Marta Moreno Vega. We're proud of you thank here you. at Images Thank Minds. you. We're proud of each other. <laughs> thank, thank you very much for being here. And uh, thank you. we'll see you next week on another edition of Images Imágenes. Hasta pronto.